I always loved walking on a smaller scale. So a few months ago I decided to make my own Victoria-inspired dress form. So I can make pretty dresses even if I only had some scraps and try new ideas without wasting a lot of fabric. So I made four of them, in different scales. And today I'm going to show you how you can make one for yourself. First, you should download and print the pattern, you can find the link in the description. Depending on the scale, it could take up to 8 pages to put the pattern together. Make sure that the PDF is set to print at actual size. Assemble pages using the instruction and cut pattern pieces out, and don't forget to cut out the triangular notches. In this video, I will show you how to make this dress form in full scale, but the process is basically the same for the other ones. The best fabric for this dress form would be quilting cotton, denim or upholstery fabric, something without much ease. But you can also use stretchy materials, if you apply fusible interfacing to them. Fold your fabric right sides together and trace the front, side front, side back and back pieces. Don't forget to mark notches at the side and bust level. Then pin both layers together and carefully cut the pieces along the lines. Clip the notches about halfway through the seam allowance from the edge of the fabric. Now you can also write the names of the patterns, so you won't get them mixed up later. Now pick up the neck, neck top and base patterns and trace them onto just one layer of your fabric. Cut them out and clip the notch on the bottom part of the neck piece. It's time to go to the sewing machine. The first step is to sew the center seam on the front pieces. You don't even have to take out the pins that were left after the cutting. You'll find the seam allowance for this pattern in the instruction. Next, open the seam so the right side is up, and place the back pieces on the top right sides together. Pin both shoulder seams and stitch them together. It should look something like this. Now move it aside and grab the side pieces. Place the side front pieces right side on top. Lay the side back pieces over them like this, so the right sides are together. Pin the side seams matching the waist notches. Make sure that you have two mirrored parts and stitch them together. Then you should clip inward curves and notch outward curves on all of the seams, or you can just use pink and shears like I did. Now take the neck piece. You need to press down the seam allowance on the top curve. Make a guide for it by running a basting stitch on the top part. Using the basting stitch as a guide, turn the hem allowance toward the wrong side of the fabric and press. The basting stitch should be exactly on the fold. Press all of the seams open. It could be a bit tricky with curved seams, but a tailor's hem which you can see me using right now, it helps a lot with that. Fold this part, matching shoulder seams and clip the neck curve. Be careful not to snip through where the stitch line is going to be. Repeat the same process for the bust area. Make a couple of notches on both sides of bust marking. Next step is to sew the neck to the body. Start by pinning the notch on the neck to the center front seam, and then pin the neck corners to the center back. If you're working on a smaller scale, it would be a good idea to base them together along the edges, otherwise you can just continue to pin. Stitch them together with the body part on the top, so you can check that the seams stay open and there is no creases or folds. Remove the basting stitch and notch the seam allowance. Press the seam open. Now, this is probably the most difficult part. 
You need to stitch side parts to the front and back in one continuous seam. Start by figuring out which side part should go where. I'll give you a hint. The side with more curvature should be joined to the front. Match and pin shoulder and side seams, then the bottom edges, waist notches and, which is the most important, notches at the bust level. Again, if you need, you can baste the bust together before sewing. I do this because it's so much easier than trying to walk around dozens of pins that are constantly trying to stab you, which is really unfortunate when you're working with white fabric. Stitch in one continuous seam, pivoting at the corners. You should start with the side part on the bottom, this way you could stretch the top layer and avoid puckering later. Now remove the basting stitches if you made them and notch the seam allowance. Press both of the seams open. It could be a bit difficult. As you can see here, I'm doing it using my hand as an iron board. It worked and I didn't burn my fingers, but you probably shouldn't do that at home. You need to press down the seam allowance on the bottom. Make a guide for it by running a basting stitch along the bottom edge. Double check that all of the vertical seams are open when you do this. Using the stitch as a guide, turn the hem allowance toward the wrong side of the fabric and press. And now let's finish the last stitch at the center back. Unfold the bottom and neck seam allowances, then pin the back pieces together matching notches at waist and neck seam, and stitch them together. Press the seam open as well. Turn the dress form right side out, and now let's work on the cardboard parts. Trace the base support piece on thick cardboard, and mark four notches at the sides. To mark the center dot, you can put a pin through the pattern into the cardboard, and then lift it up and make a cross mark at the point. Connect the opposite notches using a roll. Trace the neck top piece and cut both pieces out. If you're going to use a stand, make a hole with an O at the center point. Make sure that the wooden dowel you're using for the stand fits into the base. So, running stitches 1 fourth of an inch or 6 mm from the edge of the base all the way around using strong thread. Place the cardboard base in the center like this, gather the circle and tie the thread tails together. Copy the lines you make on the cardboard to the fabric, just make four small marks on the sides. Repeat the same process with the neck piece. First, I'm going to show you how to make a dress form without a stand. Start stuffing with the top of the shoulders, pushing each bundle of stuffing as far in as it will go. To avoid the lumpy look, be sure to use small wads of stuffing and gently push it into every crevice of your dress form. Check how the dress form looks from the side and back. The point here is to try to maintain symmetry as you go. Continue stuffing until you reach the bottom. Stuff the neck a little more and place the neck top inside the neck. Secure it using small whip stitches or a ladder stitch. Now let's move to the bottom. Here the shorter side is the front and the fuller one is the back. With that in mind, match the pencil marks on the base to the center front, center back and side seams and pin. Again, whip stitch or ladder stitch the base to the dress form. You can add more stuffing as you go, if you see some areas that kind of caved in. 
And now let's see how to make a dress form with a stand. After you covered the base with fabric, poke a hole in the fabric as well and insert the wooden dowel into the hole. You can find the measurements for the dowel in your PDF instruction. Here I use a stand that I made myself from plywood, but you can also buy a pre-made stand like this one. Place the dress form on a stand and glue the neck top to the end of the dowel. Stuff the dress form using the same methods I showed previously, but now you should also check that the dowel is centered. Stuff very firmly, but try to maintain the symmetry. After you're done with stuffing the body, add a few watts of stuffing to the neck and push the neck top down. Secure it with a whip stitch or a ladder stitch. Attach the base to the body using the same method I showed previously. I also made a finial. You'll find the STL file for it along the PDF files after the purchase. You can print it yourself if you have a 3D printer or ask someone else to print it for you, like I did. Then you can just glue it to the top. And that concludes my tutorial for this dress form. Again, you can find the links to the pattern in the description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or send me a message on Instagram. You can share your finished dress form with a hashtag in the description, and I would love to see what you make. Next time I will show you how to make these hoop skirts, but in full size. Although, <laughs> I admit, they do look rather cute in 6 scale. So I think that's all for today. Thank you for staying with me till the very end, and I'll see you when I see you.